Hey, flat tires. <laughs> it's ah, I suck. All right. Hey, flat tires. Welcome back. My name is Matt. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Now, before I get into tonight's pattern, a viewer did comment about when I recommend a book or talk about a book I'm using. Now, he asked if I could explain a little bit more about the book, particularly, is it an instruction book? Is it just a pattern index or a history book? Or, or basically, what's the book about? And that's a very valid point, so thank you, Lewis. But tonight's Tying the Founding Flies by Mike Valla is indeed an instruction book. It's got 21 flies in it. It's got a little bit of history and a little bit of how to fish them. But anytime you see pages like this with step-by-step -step guidelines for each of them, yes, it is indeed an instruction book. So tonight's pattern is in this book. It is one of the founding flies. It's the Michigan Stone. It was created in the 1950s by a guy named Paul Young, a Michigan fisherman, came up with it on the Ossible River, Al Sable, Ossible. I've heard it pronounced a couple different ways. If anybody knows how to pronounce this, you know, let us know in the comments, please. So Paul Young came up with the fly in Michigan. One of his friends, Chauncey Lively, was a writer in Pennsylvania for the Pennsylvania Angler. He wrote about the fly in 1971. It became a little bit popular in Pennsylvania, along the East Coast, in Michigan, for a couple of decades. But for the most part, it has since fallen under the radar. I couldn't find a whole lot of history on it. As far as I can tell, there is only one other video out there of anybody tying this, but it's a pretty cool pattern. I think you're gonna like it, so let's give it a shot. I'm gonna be tying this one on a size 16. It's a 1X long dry fly hook. Get that fuzz out of there. And I am using 70 denier yellow thread. Okay, now the first component on this is the back hackle. And it's going to be, a, we're going to start it about where the barb would be and take it up to about the point. So a small, grizzly, dry fly hackle here. Let's catch it in. I'm going to try and lay it with the concave side toward the hook. Might make that those first couple of fibers when they flare out look a little better. We'll see. Okay, now take your thread back up to the point. That right there is about where we're going to stop wrapping this rear hackle. And the, the rear hackle is just a little bit longer and a little bit thicker than the front hackle. So maybe four or five turns I think that's five. It is hackled up to the point of the hook, which is what the instructions say. So I'm gonna reach in here and snip off this. Now, if you need to push these up a little bit, I got two fibers sticking forward. I could either trim them or just try to push them up and take a few thread wraps. But now let's put our dubbing on here. Put, well, a little bit of wax first. Yellow dubbing. If you've got yellow rabbit, that's great. I did not have yellow rabbit, so I had some cream rabbit, and I mixed it in with some yellow, yellow acrylic yarn. Put it in my coffee grinder. Just a small little bit. You know, it's it's only going to be about a third of the the body length, so I'm going to put it in kind of tight here. And use the first couple of wraps that don't have any dubbing on to get me back to where I want the dubbing to start. Don't worry about a taper. You kind of want this flat, but if you do end up with the taper at all, make it a little bit thicker on the front. And I'll show you why. It will make that putting the, the deer hair wing on just a little bit easier. Bind it down a little bit. I got a little bump right there. I don't think the fish are going to care. So hang your thread where we're going to tie in, you know, not quite a third back, but almost getting there, where we're going to tie in the deer hair 
wing. So just standard deer hair, not a big clump. I'm going to take about this much right there, less than you would for an elk hair caddis. So I'm going to put that in my stacker. And let's see, okay. I think that's going to be enough right there. Clean out any fuzzies. And the length of this wing is just past the bend of the hook. So maybe right there. And if you're hanging your thread where you want the, the wing to be caught in. So I'm going to put it about right there. Switch hands. Take a loose wrap. And then pull up on the back side or the near side to me tighter. Maybe another wrap right there. You know, I've got three wraps on and checking my position. Okay, I think that's going to be fine. So I'm going to grab the hair again and put a couple of tight wraps going forward. And don't worry about the front splaying out on you because we're going to trim all that. So just get in here as close as you can get. Now be economical with your thread wraps. This is a dry fly, so I'm going to just put a couple right there that will help me to get this dry fly hackle caught in. Now the front is the same grizzly, but maybe one size smaller or the same size feather or just start wrapping it in a little closer to the tip where the, the barbs are smaller. So exactly what we did before right there okay now we can take our thread back up and we'll want to snip this excess off before we start wrapping this one all right my head's not getting too big yet now this front hackle is going to be just maybe one turn less so two or three will be fine up here I'm going to go with that right there. And by design, the front hackle is a little bit smaller and a little bit less of it. So two wraps there, get that secured in. And I'm going to go ahead and snip it off before I try to push these back. You still want them to come perpendicular out from your hook. So if you do this right here, just, just do that to get maybe one or two wraps back there, just enough to clear room for your whip finish. You don't want them angled way back. So I think I'll be able to get a whip finish in right here, maybe a three turn without trapping too many more of these grizzly fibers going forward. Okay, now one trick when you're cutting your thread off, don't snip it. If, if you've got a lot of hackle fibers, just open your scissor tips, put it in there, and then poke it through. That way you won't trim any of the hackle fibers that you don't want to. So it might be a little bit of cleanup to do. I've got one fiber right there, but basically this is a fishable fly. I think a drop of head cement, and it will go in my box just like it is. So there you go, folks, the Michigan Stone. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.